Hello, everyone. I'm glad to have an opportunity to introduce our recent work. Deduplication is already a popular topic on storage. In general, its workflow has several steps, including splitting the data stream into blocks, picking up unit chunks, packaging them in containers, and finally storing containers into devices. Moreover, because containers are the basic unit for compression, storage I.O. is usually based on containers. Backup storage is one of the primary use cases of deduplication and could achieve a high deduplication ratio. It is because the workloads of backup storage usually are successive snapshots of the primary data. Deduplication reduces storage costs by allowing workloads share their common chunks. But this kind of sharing destroys the locality of workloads, which results in the fragmentation problem. The fragmentation problem leads to several negative consequences, including read amp amplification, random access, and garbage collection. Like the example on the right, when restoring backup, backup three, because of container-based I.O., we have to load four containers for our repaired chunks. It, it causes a uh, two times read amplification, and we have to access four containers. On the other hand, because locality is broken, we cannot immediately delete backups. We have to delete backups in logic firstly, and then run a costly offline garbage collection to reclaim all invalid chunks. There are several works aiming at fragmentation problem, and they follow the idea that rewriting some duplicates according to their fragmentation degree to maintain a level of data locality. But the results in their paper show that it remains a huge read amplification and deduplication ratio is sacrificed. Therefore, the fragmentation problem is still challenging. We also aim at the fragmentation problem and focus on reducing the read amplification. Our idea begins by considering how read amplification is generated. Container-based I.O. is the reason, but as we mentioned, it comes from the requirement of compression and cannot be given up. So except for that, we found the layout of chunks is a key issue. The chunks in containers having different have different life cycle leads to read amplification. For example, like container one, three chunks have different life cycle. When we restore backup two and, uh, and read container one from disk, a read amplification is caused because chunk two is not required in backup two. However, when we restore backup one, reading, con reading container one will, cost, will not cause any read amplification. It tells us we would better ensure chunks in containers have the same life cycle. Thus, we can give another data layout like that one. We classify chunks into categories according to their life cycle. In this data layout, backups consist of several containers. No matter which backup you want to restore, there is always no useless chunk included in involved containers, which means no read amplification. It seems good, but the number of categories will be huge if we apply this classification. I can't imagine what a number it will be when n up to 100 or more. Thus, the next question is how to reduce the number of categories. We denote four kinds of chunks. Internal chunks could find other identical chunks in BI. Adjacent chunks could find other identical chunks in BI-1. Skip chunks could find other identical chunks in more earlier backup versions like BI-2 or BI-3. Unique chunks can cannot find its identical chunks. We find that avoiding deduplicating skip chunks slightly impacts the deduplication ratio, which also reduces the kinds of life cycles. Because each kind of life cycle maps to a category, the number of categories are also reduced to an acceptable level. Currently, we learned that there is an avoidable data layout that minimizes the read amplification. The next question is how to acquire this data layout. We cannot reorganize all chunks after each backup is stored 
because it is very costly. Thus, we are going to design a mathematical introduction-like approach. Our approach impl implements in iterative evolution of our classification-based chunk layout with two key techniques. Finally, our system named MFD Duke runs like the figure, arranging new unique chunks with the previous version data layout to generate a new version data layout. As a result, our system achieves no read amplification in restoring and no longer require garbage collection. Here I prepare an ex example to explain how iterative evolution is achieved. In this example, we name categories with coordinate style. Cat IJ contains all chunks whose life cycle is from BI to BJ. In the beginning, the system is initialized and we start storing backup one. In this process, we record fingerprints of all chunks in backup one and uh, duplicate internal chunks. All unit chunks compose cat 11 and it naturally satisfies classification-based chunk layout and don't require arranging. After that, we start storing backup two. Similarly, we also require fingerprints of backup two's chunk and dupli deduplicate internal and adjacent chunks. After that, backup one's fingerprint is useless and could be, uh, could be released. All unit chunks in backup two compose cat 22 and we have to run arranging to update chunk layout. Because some chunk in cat 11 are referenced by backup two, they need to be migrated to cat 12. Therefore, in this arranging process, we traverse cat 11 with backup two's fingerprint and migrate duplicate chunks in uh, duplicate chunks to cat 12. Left chunks remain in cat 11 and are archived. Each arranging will generate a volume to package new archived categories. The arranging is done. After that, we start storing backup three. We also record new fingerprints, deduplicate internal and adjacent chunks, and release old fingerprints. Then, then, we, we, then we run arranging. In arranging, we also migrate and archive chunks. Finally, our required data layout is generated, and it is the same as we showed previously. Our data layout benefits restoring backups. It is because required chunks are always in several sequences. For, exa for example, the finger shows the data layout after storing four backups. If we want to restore backup one, we need blue categories, and required chunks are in four sequences. If we want to restore backup two, we need yellow categories and required chunks are in three sequences, and so on. Read, ampl read amplification is wide, and the number of random sticks is always equal to or less than the number of stored backups. In, in, in evaluation, we can find this feature helps for achieving a much higher restore performance. Our data layout also benefits deletion. We support both FIFO deletion and out-of-order deletion. Deleting backup K means reclaiming all unit, unit chunks of backup K. From the name of categories, we learn that unit chunks of each backup separately compose CAT11, CAT22, CAT33, and CAT44. Thus, for FIFO deletion, we can simply delete the earliest category to delete the earliest backup, like this way. For out-of-order deletion, we can truncate corresponding volumes to, re to remove the involved categories. For example, backup 3 could be deleted by truncating volume 3 and uh, removing cat 3 3 in this way. Thus, previous max wipe style garbage collection is no longer required. In evaluation, we divide storage into backup space and user space. Tested data sets are backed up from the user space to the backup space version by version, while the restore runs in the reverse direction. And our system retains the most recent 20 backup versions. The data sets are listed in the table, including several real world data sets and uh, synthetic data sets. In the beginning, we start the actual deduplication ratio. 
Many techniques accelerate the duplication system by spending more storage space, storage space like rewrite techniques, not greatest garbage collection. And uh, here we take these issues into account to measure the total storage cost. Compared with existing approaches, the results show that MFDDupe achieves the most higher actual deduplication ratio, which is a very close to the exact deduplication ratio. Next, we study restore performance. Previous work evaluates restore performance with the proxy metric, speak factor. Because speak factor is not feasible for variable size containers, we extend it into two metrics, stick factor and rigged amplification factor. Stick factor reflects the cost of random sticks and read amplification factor demonstrates the cost of sequential reads. MFD dupe achieves a significantly smaller stick factor and read amplification factor. We also evaluate uh, actual restore speed. MFD dupe achieves up to 11 times higher performance. F-RAID indicates the sequential performance of storage devices. MFT dupes restore performance on four data sites are about 1.44 times, 1.04 times, 1.18 times, and 0.98 times of F-RAID. According to the share of internal chunks, we could find MFT dupe nearly completely utilize storage devices performance. And more evaluation results are introduced in the paper and uh, these are all content of my presentation. Our code is open source at GitHub and here is my email address. Thanks for listening.